Here with us is former Israeli ambassador and diplomat Elon Pincus. Ambassador, welcome back. Thank you, Hannah. Good to be with you. Good so, morning. Good morning. So the U.S. has warned Israel not to go into Rafah. Other world leaders have done the same. We see families fleeing, saying there's no safe place for them to go. You are a former ambassador, sir. What would you say to the people of Gaza right now? To the people of Gaza? Yes. Pray. Um, I, I'm sorry it sounds cynical or tragic, but... Uh, Look, I don't know, none of us know, and how, how big or what, what scale this operation is going to be. But if you're a Gaza and you fled from the north and you're in the south, and now you're being asked to flee again uh, to the west, and you have nothing, you don't have a house, you don't have an apartment, you, base, you don't have clothes, you don't have access to food, you don't have access to medicine, you don't have access to uh, potable water. Um, and then the Israelis tell you, well, move, because we're planning some kind of a military operation. In and of itself, that could be justified, but I'm just, you asked me about the Gazans. I'd say there's, I got nothing to say to them but pray, because, because I don't want to be in their situation. I don't want to be, uh, I can't even begin to fathom their predicament. No, Ambassador, that's a very honest answer, and I appreciate it. So how will this offensive jeopardize relationships between the United States and Israel moving forward? Well, that, that depends on the scale of the operation. If, if Israel limits the operation and bases it on uh, so-called intelligence-driven micro-incursions, um, then the U.S. can tolerate this, look the other way, sort of justify it, uh, even defend Israel in terms of the military justification. If this exceeds what I just described and becomes a ground operation, as you correctly um, mentioned in your introduction, um, then it's going to sour further the relationship. Now, it's going to sour further the relationship uh, that's already sour, that's already cracked, that's already, uh, that, that is already suffering from a severe shortage or uh, um, credibility deficit. Um, and the uh, frustration in Washington, from my understanding, and I talk to people there, for Mr. Netanyahu's uh, defiance and transigence and manipulations is, um, is skyrocketing. Um, what the U.S. can do, that remains to be seen. Now, there are reports coming out that the U.S. will give Israel intelligence on where Hamas leaders are located in hopes of minimizing the civilian death count. Do you think Netanyahu will be willing to take those numbers? Well, I, I, I got to tell you, this is a strange story. I mean, I, I read it in the Washington Post like you did. Um, it's, it, it's very strange, because if the U.S. had this information, then why have they not divulged it to Israel already? Secondly, on Friday, the State Department came out with a 46-page uh, report, of which 40, 14 pages were dedicated, devoted to Israel, um, um, about compliance, uh, international, but we're talking about Israel, compliance with American law and international law in terms of recipients of American arms and weapons. And in it, in that report that was submitted to Congress, um, based on a national security memorandum, um, the U.S. admitted that it is, uh, um, it, finds it's dif it finds it difficult to gather information. It has not attained sufficient or adequate levels of intelligence to ascertain whether Israel's actions uh, were non-compliant or in violation of American law. So on the one hand, they don't have the intelligence. On the other hand, they come up with this, we know where Sinwar is. What? Well, where is he? In Miami Beach, in Queens, where, where, where is he? You know exactly where he is, but you're not saying? Right. I don't know. This, this whole story seems a little weird to me. Okay, well, thank you for sharing that. Very, very quickly, Ambassador. Netanyahu is losing support from world leaders who have repeatedly told him not to expand into Rafah. We know he's losing support from the Israeli people who just want the hostages returned. What is Netanyahu's strategy here? Survival. That's all he cares about. National security be damned. The future of Israel be damned. Israel's reputation be damned. Relations with the U.S. be damned. Um, it's all about survival. Now, I don't think he's going to survive this. Um, I just don't, do not think there's any possible, conceivable way that he could uh, survive the debacle of October 7th and, more importantly, the mismanagement of the war, the failure to come up with political objectives.
Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.